more Brick Effect Render guys. I um, think you have been enjoying the previous ones, so why stop there? May as well keep giving you what you just want to see. But before I get into the video, I just again would like to thank everybody that donated to the charity event that I, I ran and is still going live. I really appreciate all the support on that and again just a big thanks to all the subscribers and if you're not subscribed get subscribed but yeah I really do appreciate all the support guys and that's back to the video now. What I will do here is I'm going to show you every single stage here try and put in as much detail as I can and obviously we'll always forget things but you know there's always time to make another video and an even better one again but just gonna let me know what you think of the results of this job did i get the colors right and um, did i get the shape right you know i'd love to hear from you so this was to be done with the brick effect render again and this is what I'm going to try and replicate it's lots of colors in there and it's like a rustic brick nice rounded edges some broken edges and stuff so I'm going to be looking forward to getting it replicated as close as possible and first things first get the scratch coat on my base coat and my satin cement render here will be either 3 to 1 or 4 to 1 scratch coat um, I can't actually remember in particular what that scratch coat was but whatever it was the next coat will be that bit weaker it'll either be a 4 to 1, 4.5 to 1 or 5 to 1 so always keep that in mind guys that your next coat you'll want to drop off a bit of cement and have it that bit weaker and you can see as well some nice wee details in this wall as you can see them two pillars what I'm just working at now and I'm going to do something different with them also the top of the wall on my left is that wee bit of a different level so I'll have to do something there as well it also has a what's called a shoulder course of brick along the top edge which I'm going to try and replicate on the wall we're doing and for the scratch coat I've just used the colo mix and maybe being a wee bit hard on it mixing so much cement recently but been getting on well in the big massive Rafina mega mixer bucket there um, just filling it up I think maybe took three of them tubs to get this all scratch coated not putting it on deadly thick as there is another two layers to go on the next day here once this sets up Again, not, not a bad day for rendering. What you want is a dry day. Um, dry and cloudy is what I prefer the most. Where it's not too cold, it's not too warm, it's not wet, and you know, just keeps the sun off you a wee bit. It is a bit more comfortable to work. Um, the subscriber was saying there that he preferred to watch these on normal speed, and was just letting him know that I had spare them up for the reason that it gets me closer to the 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 point of each stage but let me know guys if you prefer to watch it slower or if you would like which i might do is i might upload the full version as well um, maybe a week or two later but definitely hit me up in the comments let me know what you think on that but yeah, the tools that I'm using to get my satin cement render on the wall, my first coat here, my scratch coat, is a Rafina rendering trial. And again, the pointsman hawk, I've really, really get used to this pointsman hawk, it's so comfortable. Um, it's actually that comfortable now that when I use a Marshall Town, it, it feels so wrong, so horrible on the wrist and arm. But that's just me, I'm sure, you know, everybody's got their own things but i'm definitely enjoying this pointsman hawk at the minute and the rafina render trial here is it's either 16 or 18 so it's quite a big trial and i don't mind scratch coating with it or even putting on render with it because i find that it is keeping it nice and straight for me so it's not too bad 
Um, but again, the scratcher, back to the tools, the scratcher is a refined scratcher also. Um, like I said, the mixer that's done the most of the mixing was a Colo mix. So what you've seen there was scratch coat was all on and I were going for what I call the butter coat. And we're getting all the butter coat on here. We have a rule, you can see the two bricks holding the rule on. And that's just going to keep us in a nice straight line along the top. So basically the butter coat will turn out to be what you'll find um, when I'm cutting out. That it is the mortar joints that you're cutting into. So you don't, I don't put it on deadly, deadly thick. But you don't particularly want it too thin either. Otherwise, it, you know, you won't be able to cut into it. And just using the Tizak spatula to give it a quick straighten. Nothing extremely special to straighten it. You do want certain areas straight. Um, but you did see the brick. It's it is a bit of a rustic brick as well. So although it is nice and straight and flat that way, but there's something when you put a level on, you'll find that all the perps don't line up. Um, which uh, when I when I was measuring out and working out for where I was cutting the bricks, it threw me off a wee bit. I thought when you look at the wall, it looks perfect, but when you actually try to line up all the the perps, they, they don't line 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 up. But so you'll notice as well that after I got it all scratch coated or sorry butter coated that there's a wee key on it just give it a wee slight key just in case it dried on us because the sun is out today and I didn't want it to get cooked and once you have that all on you're ready for your top coat this is the color coat so the way that I've went about the colour coat was I was trying to match in the colour as best as possible and the the way I've went about that was I went down the most common colour of brick and I tried to make, make a mix the same colour as a wet brick so that when this wall dries out it'll hopefully dry out the same. Might be slight differences. As you can see some angles here with the sun hitting it just really really makes it look red but it, it does fade slightly when it dries and just using the refined plastic float here that you've seen in my previous video there with uh, cutting out the render details the arrow tips and uh, probably drop the link in the description below but yeah i'm finding the we floats lovely for sand cement work and it's going to get me the texture that I, I want on the surface of these bricks. As you'll notice, these, these aren't like the other bricks that I have been doing. They're a smoother face on them. So, although you can rub this sand and cement up with a float, I prefer to hit it with the plastic trowel as I'm doing. And you'll see in another couple of stages here how I get on with the face of the brick and you just can judge me on the final result. You might have noticed that the wee top lip has been coated first. As you can see the wee lip of it red there all the way along the top edge and that will give me a nice straight edge to work up to. I've also been using an exterior angle trowel to help sweeten it up as I go. Again the good thing about the bricks is they're not sharp sharp edges if they were that would be fine too but they're not so i can you know you could probably get away with completely freehand but i want to start off with straight and then sort of dull it down and dumb it in a wee bit better as i go so the big level that i'm using to cut this top line is from either Rambo tools or Faithful tools. I'm not sure which which one it was, as they both do them. I think it might actually be a Faithful tools level, but I know Rambo tools sell them as well. But I'm not sure exactly where I got this, but it has been very robust and has done me well over the years. And you know, thought I'd give that a mention. Don't normally talk about levels too much, but you need a good level to keep keep your work nice and clean 
and I'll also talk about the wee cutting tool and basically I just made a cutting tool myself it's just a bit of wire of a handle and you could use small tools and you could make all sorts of wee cutting tools but that one there is pretty handy and light you know a bit maybe a wee bit stiffer would be better as well but you know it does the trick and it gets the shapes that I want. The thing about wire is you can actually shape it pretty well if you've got a round um, mortar joint to cut out you can make a round piece of wire. If it's square like these are you can make it more square which to me you know that's that's why wire is good. The only thing is this type of wire I'm using does bend a lot so sometimes you have to adjust it through the job and so on a real real crisp job you might be better with something like a small tool cutting where it won't go out of shape or, or that much anyway. I do remember I think Refina actually sell our Eislar cutting tools and what they are is it's like a handle that will slide along a button with two steel arrow tips basically bolted on and what they'll do is cut a V into the legs of K rand a very very tidy V but like all metal if you keep rubbing it it will change shapes and what you found with them blades was they actually after a job or two you needed to put new blades on them as they just turned into circles and there was no sharpness left in them so if you didn't have new blades what we found ourselves doing was cutting it with them to get the shape and then K-Rand can be very very hard to cut especially the depth we are cutting the MVs so it was taking a, a lot of power behind the arms um, but what you were finding then you were doing was cutting it with a, a small tool or a point and trowel to get that V into it, that real sharp V as it wasn't a round we were doing, it was a V but that was a little bit off topic but as you can see what I'm doing along the top here is a shoulder course and I've just cut a block of wood the exact same size as an actual brick it's the same width and it's now the same length for cut it to suit but what what you'll want to do even even if you're using something like that every three or four you'll probably want to check it for plumb as if you start going off once you get too much past three or four it's going to look ridiculous and you're going to have to fill it in and start again and just using the wee soft dustpan brush here that we bounced up to the hardware store to get as I realised only had hard brushes which weren't going to be very good for it. I was just going to use a small tussle brush but sensible thinking got us to use one of these so again like I say you'll, you'll see the, the final result here at the end. did have a, a bit of a nightmare with my memory running out on this one I possibly took too much clips so you know but I wanted to get lots of this part of it in I think this is the part people enjoy to watch in the cutting and you also see that I've lined up with the other walls course of, of brick as well you see that they all line in there there is a wee bit of a step in the wall but yeah so if you are doing things like this detail work detail render cutting anything you like i said you're going to want good levels make sure you've you test them and stuff and there's there is a couple other tricks to a level if a level's not straight if you plumb it up if you plumb it up and then you spin the level if it's not if it's slightly off one way if you keep doing that it'll actually adjust itself over the long period if that makes sense you know if it's three mil off one way but you spin it it'll be three mil off the other way and spin it you're just going in a straight line not sure if i'm explaining that right but if not let me know as well but that's how i do it and sometimes you can just play it safe with the level i think any bricklayers in will know exactly what i'm talking about there um, but that's how you can play it safe I'll probably not speed up this part of the video just too much as like I said people want to see the techniques done and if I speed up 
I might lose some of that. So I'll not speed up too much on these cutting stages. And I just sort of watch them. You will see, it takes time, but after we wet it, everything starts to come together when you're cutting. Um, you might even see me making a few mistakes when I'm cutting here where I cut the wrong perps. The perps are the ones going up and down, not the big long ones, they're the, the wee ends of the bricks, that's the perps. So you'll, you'll possibly catch me out. I, I did that once or twice and I had to refill it and start again. But I'm only human, we're all only human. It's okay to make mistakes. It's how you learn. Things like that, you'll probably make that mistake a hundred times anyway. But as long as you catch it and you fix it, there's there's no issue. And possibly made it made more character in the actual brick when you were doing it. So don't really fear that much. And I know a lot of plasters do watch this. And I do think plasters for tradesmen are right up there with the world's best tradesmen. Most plasters I meet are very fussy and particular about their work, which is good. Along with a lot of other trades as well, have met some brilliant joiners and, and bricklayers and stuff as well, and bricklayers on YouTube and stuff as well that I, I interact with, like Mark and stuff, um, some real, real good workers. Uh, I think it does show with, with certain trades and certain guys, tailors and stuff that the effort to put in, it does show in the, in the quality of work that they leave behind. So I've sped it up here, uh, I think four times faster. It's done at a terribly big speed, but otherwise this is going to be an hour long video and nobody's going to want to watch me plastering for an hour, I don't think. But again, if you just want to watch this all in, in full time, I'll try my best to upload that video. And or the other ones with all the detail, the cutting, the brick effect, any of the other sort of fancy videos that I have. Um, these are the ones I really enjoy doing and like to share. Um, so that's why I'm desperate to record these types. Especially, you know, this, this is by no means an easy job or an easy task. But I really wanted to share it with you. So that's why I took the extra bit of time setting up the cameras. I wanted to get it from start to finish again, from scratch coat to final polish coat, and basically show off my work a wee bit. Really enjoy doing it, so why, why not show it off a bit? And you guys seem to be enjoying watching it. So this is just another brick effect render one to the collection of videos that we we'll have, and I'm sure there's more of these to come. Have actually priced quite a lot of them, so you never know. A couple more might come come through. Hopefully, you know I can do. I have some things in mind that I can do, but I might have just might have to really wait a wee while for them. And again, if you are following the wall that I built and the detail I'm doing it on it, and the pictures that are on the community tab that I plan on on doing with that, is you will be catching something more unique each time. I'm gonna try even more rendering things there, some things that I've never even done before, so um, you never know, might, might, might make a few more mistakes, but again, like I said earlier, mistakes can be fixed. Mistakes are great because you can learn from them. So don't be don't be afraid to make mistakes guys. As you know, it won't won't necessarily break you. So don't be afraid of it. So have I think at this stage ran out of memory with the main camera, although this phone is picking up some great detail and some nice colour. So I might have to just start using the phone from now on. But yeah, let me know what you think of the first half of the video there to this part here. So was running out of memory on everything and battery on phone as well, so everything was trying to become him against us the only good thing was it didn't rain so fingers crossed but you can see after we corner or two there that everything starts to come together and uh, thinking getting the shape pretty well and uh, can't wait to show off what i do with this pillar here as uh, i think it might make sort of you know i think some jobs you need to just come up give it a wee bit of personality and sometimes you will have to come up with something to make it right and obviously with the top of that pillar 
you've, I've got a few options. I could do a shoulder course. I could do, you know, just make it look like a brick's been cut or um, a few other things. But I wanted something to actually make a bit of a feature out of those pillars. So I'll not say too much about them. And I'll, I'll maybe speed up the video here again and just gonna let me know what, what you would have thought if anything would look better. Working against the, the red background, the sort of brownie red backgrounds would be a bit funny on your eyes when you're used to just, um, you know, pink or, or grey plaster or satin cement, a, a sort of a greeny grey colour of satin cement. So working with that there against your eyes is a bit funny. And anybody doing K rent will have a bit of an idea what that's like to work against a certain colour of background for for any period of time and sort of can make your eyes go be a bit funny as well so you might wanna if you're doing anything big you might wanna sort of take 10 minutes away every now and again but so anybody who thought would just did small brick effect render jobs and no any size any any size any you know small or big it can be done inside outside it can surely be done and again i do enjoy doing it so if if you're close by and you're wanting it done you can certainly give me a shout uh, i know a few people from london were actually looking at done but i'm not sure it would have been a great time to go to london with the, the coronavirus being about and just the way I travel and that was as well so i'm not, not quite sure it would have been the best job for us but yeah if anybody local to me um, is wanting something done or has ideas that they want done and for sure might just have found the guy to be able to do it so definitely hop over to the facebook we'll have a mac plaster page there and you can contact us through that or email you can find the email address on the channel also so guys obviously the cameraman held the phone the wrong way at this stage but it's okay still getting good detail um, at the end here there'll be some real nice clips of the end result and just might just be able to catch here over my shoulder what way we finished off that slope and went for a big cap sometimes you see them caps on pillars and stuff so that's what i opted for here a nice nice cap on both of them i think it really it shows them off a lot so it does and i think it sort of just puts that wee bit of a feature and detail on the wall a wee bit of uniqueness basically i'm not sure if that's a word but who cares so let me know what you think so far and um, it really does start to come together when you start getting some of the panels done and you can see i'm cutting it quite quickly and that's because if i don't it, it'll get beyond me and cutting it will be a lot more difficult and if there is any mistakes it'll be harder to fix as well so you know it's it may look easy but there could be a lot of things could go wrong here as well um you know such as color rain weather weather could be the real big thing and if it again weather suction if you haven't controlled your backgrounds right it could be too dry or too wet um, doing the butter coat and then the top coat same day if it's too wet you'll you'll actually get blisters and bubbles and some slumps you'll definitely not want that especially if you're trying to straighten it with even a speed skim you'll not want any of any of those happening to you will that be fun but you can see I think my straight edge is still sticking to it here at this stage so it's not not too bad but yeah the the tools I've used you know you don't necessarily need the tools to do you, you could use any tools some plasters could get away with using any tools but I tend to find if you get the right tools in your hand and you can definitely do cracking jobs and that's why I sort of give out shout outs to the tools as well because some of the ones I have been using, the likes of this, the straight edge, have just last, lasted the test of time and that's kind of what I want. I want reliability 
uh, want robust tools, things that aren't going to break after a couple of months. And again, like I say, you'll just you'll always see them on the channel. If if they're working for me, you'll see it. If it's not, it will it'll fade away. Um, that being said, there is a few tools that just haven't been on the the channel just as much. But um, you know, if if there's any tools particular you have seen me use, and you just want to ask, somebody was asked me about speed skim. I think it was my mate Mark Hemp, and we were chatting about the speed skim. And believe it or not, it is still something I still use. Um, even in this video, you see me use the Tezak one. So definitely certain tools do do still get used as well so don't be afraid to ask questions on tools methods um, I'll always try and help out as best I can um, if I can I will if I, I can't I'll tell you I don't know and if I can find out for you I will find out as I do know a lot of plasters as well so some of them guys might have the answer if I don't but it's always nice to get to the last wee bit feel like you've really achieved something in the last couple of cuts and you can see even the little bit of attention to detail see the top cap if you look at that top top brick on the corner you'll see that it, it's just slightly sloping off at the back that's actually even been done on purpose as there is trees up above this so the back line we've tried to slope the whole way down to throw the water behind the wall to stop any staining on the front and um, so the whole shoulder course should have that tiny wee slope and the idea of that was just to throw the water away the opposite way as much as possible so that you know let me know what you think of that um, would you have done that or would you not have but it's something you know this country gets a lot of rain so we're trying to avoid any discard if possible and that's a good way to do it so here's the the end product and color it in some more just to, to throw it match it in that wee bit more and like i said this this wall if the guy's watching this he can drop me a wee picture i'd like to see what way it fully dried out it's I live quite a wee bit away from this so it's not just around the corner for me to get a, a couple of pictures of but you know if it has dried out closer it certainly sent me a, sh a wee snap and use the spear jackson tape for marking out there's the colo mix there's the brick up close and this is mine it's slightly maybe slightly sharper but definitely think we did well matching it here still a couple couple of bits to be cleaned up just before we go but let me know if you think it's real or not.